Hi everyone and welcome back to Sidebar Sessions. We are so excited to be here with you on this first day of April 2021. Mom, how are you doing today? I'm doing good. I'm glad it's it's uh, um, we're entering into spring. I say entering in because I don't care what the calendar says. Hey, we're in the Easter snap, okay? <laughs> it is cold. <laughs> it's beautiful outside, but it's cold. So next week, and then it, it, you can take your jackets out, put them back up, you know, however you do them and everything because we own for spring. So yes, I'm doing good. Won't be not nary a sock to be found on our feet <laughs> oh, <laughs> until October. I, now that's what I like. Let my toes out. Let the little piggies breathe. <laughs> it's, it's a wonderful thing. It's a wonderful thing. Oh wow! Excited just for that. It's the little things, people. Just the little things. I always think about my friend Teresa Griffin. If you're watching, hey, how you doing? Oh yeah, it's a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful thing. Yeah. Just love her. Love her. Love her. So today we are going to be talking about one of our favorite topics, balling on a budget. Yay! Yes, yes. So today we want to talk a little bit about our experiences with, with money, our mm -hmm. colorful experiences with money, and also share with you guys some things that we have learned um, both taught and bought over the years mm. to help us all get through this season. Um, thankfully, for a lot of people, things are starting to turn around from the happenings of the last year. Yes. But hey, um, there are some people we know that are still struggling a little bit or using this opportunity to get things back on track. So Let's talk a little bit about money. Yes. So, yes. Tell me, tell me about your experience growing up in terms of money and how you learned about finances. Well, my family was always in business. Your grand, you know, grandfather always had a business. And we worked around in that business was at early ages like 10 11 or whatever actually working he had a small grocery store but other businesses but working the register counting money you know we knew when he went to the bank you know we would help do all of that kind of stuff so being around money was nothing strange or new but the thing is we never really were taught how to manage it um, we were given little allowances or whatever, and we kind of paid ourselves too. <laughs> and so, yes, but never really, like I said, it never really was sat down and said, you know, okay, this is how you budget, or you know, m this is how we spend this for that, or anything like that. So, that's pretty much how you know I grew up, and for better or worse. You know, not knowing that kind of translated into adulthood of not managing money very well. So um, as far as, you know, the growing up, that's that's our story of how, you know, like I said, being around it, knowing, you know, what it could buy and what it couldn't buy, but not knowing how to personally manage it. So let's go with that. How did that not learning about personal finances young translate in your adult life? Well, I think about initially the first time credit cards in college. And at that time, and I had was working at an internship at that time, they would give credit cards as long as you were 18, <laughs> you know, and you could go in the mall and they were set up and they had to, you know, say, hey, you want to apply for this credit card or whatever? And they give you a little umbrella or something. Mm -hmm. And, mm -hmm. yeah, and you 
this little application or whatever and you get one okay that's great that that sounds wonderful but to uh 19 20 year old that doesn't technically have a full you know i had a temporary inter internships are temporary they end Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I get this credit card, these, these credit cards, not, not one, these, and you know, oh, I'm spending, I'm balling, exact, but not on a budget. And so, you know, then these, you know, you go back to real life and you don't have this internship anymore. And it's like, how do you pay for these, these cards? These bills are rolling in. And so now you're trickling into bad credit. And that was the start of bad credit for me. Um, but it also was the start of aversions to credit cards. You know, it's like you can, it's on one side of a coin and another, and I didn't have that balance, you know? Okay. Yeah. I was so afraid to go down that rabbit hole again that I was like, no way, never cash only for, I don't know how long, you know, 10, 15, 20, as long as until you all came to work, you know, I was telling you no credit cards, no credit card. And I'm not, you know, there are some financial gear rules that we know of that don't subscribe to the credit card. That's okay. If that's what, you know, you feel, but I think there's a balance. And if you learn how to use them responsibly, mm -hmm. then they can be a, a great tool because that's all they are. But long story short, that was the uh, one of the first um, ways or times that I saw not learning about how to manage money and credit and all of those things, saving, invest. It translated into that, you know, uh, signing up for credit cards that I could not afford. Uh, so that was one of the first areas. Okay. Okay. So, all right. I hear that your lack of personal finance led you to kind of overextend yourself some in the debt department. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Tell me a little bit more, I guess, kind of what was your rock bottom? <laughs> <laughs> well, if you, you know, um, I, I term it, it we'll, we'll fast forward to, you know, married and getting ready to buy home. And I term this the house from hell. Um, not again, this is the time of predatory lending. You know, you have to, you know, I, I always say learn these, these financial terms, learn about finances, learn about as much as you can so that you don't get trapped. And during that time, you know, they were giving mortgages away like water, you know, like lollipops. As um, long as you had a job, they didn't care about your credit. They didn't care about your debt to income ratio. All of that came into play after because this, this was a time where, you know, people just really were giving mortgages to people that could not afford them or, you know, or over again, overextending, getting too much of a mortgage. And so, um, and then home inspections weren't stressed. It was just so much wrong in this time. So with the housing industry, so thank God that even though it's tighter now, I think it's so much better because it gets people into homes that they can afford. It gets people into quality homes, but our story though, um, again, we were both, you know, both working could afford, but maybe not the amount that we, you know the the amount that they will qualify you for they do that now that's why you still gotta have common yeah. sense just because you qualify for five hundred thousand just given a number that doesn't mean that's what you should buy and so not knowing any of this you know we go for the gusto then on top of that we're looking at everything and it's in the neighborhood we always wanted to be in but we did not get a home inspection and that was the downfall and everything that could have gone wrong with that home it <laughs> did including our dear chiffron here standing in the kitchen washing dishes and i hear oh and she falls through the floor you know before <laughs> the floor okay it, it just i could go on i don't even want to tell you all the stuff but you know that was 
that was a very stressful, I mean, I, I that, that was, if you want to say financial rock bottom, that was financial rock bottom because not only did we have to let that house go, you know, we lost money in the process trying to fix it and repair it and pay for it and everything. So again, some of that our fault, but at the same time, not a lack of knowledge is a dangerous thing. You know, it's like the word said, people perish for a lack of knowledge. And so not knowing what to ask and how to be, you know, getting the right resources and being guided into that home buying process, we entered into something that uh, was turned out to be really bad. Well, I'll be out here. So much much of that experience colored how I learned to manage money. Um, Mom, you and dad did a really good job of, I guess, trying to stop the cycle of the things you learned the hard way. You tried to make sure that we wouldn't. Exactly. I remember somewhere... I had to have been maybe nine or 10. Hefty used to make these like garbage (laughs) bags that came in a plastic tube. It was a a nice little packaging. Yeah. But he sat me down with my little tube and a piece of paper and showed me um, percentages. You showed me basically how to budget. Mm-hmm. With what you know, little pennies or whatever that I had, but you showed me how to lay out a budget, and that was my first little savings account. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Then I got my first real savings account when I was old enough to have one, probably about 15. Yeah, 15, 15, 16, somewhere around that. Mm-hmm. And I still have that savings account to this day. So, you know, reversing the curse, so to speak. Mm -hmm. Growing up without a lot, you really learn to, you you learn really quickly what truly is a need and what's a want. Yes, you Um, do. And you learn to be happy with less. There's a quote that says, um, gratitude. I think it says gratitude turns what you have into enough. Mm, that's good. That's good. Yeah. You learn to be resourceful too. Absolutely. <laughs> you know, yeah, you 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 learn, you know, some really good life skills. And like I said, you know, any situation is a learning situation. And whether it's good or or, or bad or whatever, if you can learn something positive coming out of it, then you know it's a blessing. And so in turn, like I said, things that we learned the hard way, um, we wanted to make sure to teach you all what, you know, what we did know and uh, to teach you all to learn, you know, to get information for yourself. If we would, even if we didn't know it, we would point you to it. Hey, look, you need to look at this. You need to look at that. You need to study that. Uh, just get educated on money because, um, you know, that's money is, is, one of the uh, one of the more stressful topics mm-hmm. in relationships in in families or whatever and learning to use it properly when wisely can go a long ways in uh, some peace <laughs> I'll say that it's a peaceful habitation. And that's one thing I will say on the flip side. I'm just now kind of learning in my, you know, late twenties, early thirties to use money as a tool. I kind of developed the fear of it. I was getting ready to ask, you know, where, how did that affect you? You know, not having sometimes that can have a nick, you know, and so now you're getting into that. Go ahead. Some people go Ooh. overboard, and as soon as they have something, it's like, woo, I've got money. Let me. Right. Play with it. And blow it all. Exactly. I have a hard time spending money in particular on myself. Mm-hmm. And there are a lot of risks. If I have any regrets in life, risks that I did not take because I was afraid of being poor again. 
Yes, yes, I, that is very real. And um, that's like, you know, I, again, it's kind of like what I did with the credit, you know, you're so fearful of going down that rabbit hole again that you don't attempt or try again in a different way, you know? <laughs> and so um, you have to learn how to, you know, my word balance that, that, you know, it, yeah, it was a bad experience, but if I do this differently, mm -hmm. you know, the, the, the outcome could be positive. It could be positive. So, you know, we have to retrain ourselves. We have to retrain ourselves and, it, and it's never too late. You know, even though things are some things you can't go back and you can't rewrite, but you can go forward and write new chapters in your life. Absolutely. 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 So, you know, double-edged sword, I wouldn't change anything about, mm -hmm. you know, growing up, though, just because of what it afforded me, you know, strategically in, in street smarts wise. Exactly. That's enough. I mean, you know, that's the positive part of it. You definitely have survival skills, you know, yeah. um, like I said, resourcefulness, those things. I think you need, regardless whether you got a million or a dollar, you need to know how to budget, how to, uh, uh, they say, fake it till you make it. You know, you you know, you got to learn those things because they are just life skills, pure life skills that I think a lot of young people are missing today. Um, you know, if you doing without sometimes. It helps not to create that entitlement mentality mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. that, you know, and, and especially again, as parents, like you said, a good point. Sometimes you'll go the opposite way. We could have gone, well, let's just give them all we didn't have and let's just throw it out, you know, at all of that. And that's a lot of times what a lot of parents do. Not saying it's right or wrong, but, you know, you're so not wanting your children to suffer that you don't let them experience life because this is real because you where you are today may not be where you are tomorrow financially you may be here and then we saw this during the pandemic people lost jobs good jobs they, it went from one in two incomes to one or some to none so how do you make it how do you survive how do you push through if you don't have some skills and some basic budgeting Okay, now we only have a hundred dollars. How are we going to do this? You know, what are we going to give up? What is a need, like you said, versus a want? Mm -hmm. So, I think that's, that's absolutely true. It, it's a training ground, it is for sure a training ground. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's what I learned. <laughs> <laughs> Well, and we kind of talk a little bit more about some of this this survival and, and strategy, because um, I believe these are like leading principles to your point, no matter how much money you have or don't have, um, you got to have a good foundation. Exactly. And I will say it made me think of that episode of The Cosby Show mm -hmm. where um Cliff tells Cleo, basically, I have money. <laughs> yes. Yes. Exactly. Not you. Not I you. have money. Exactly. Exactly. Until you get a J-O-B, <laughs> right. then you have money. Exactly. What's mine is mine, not you. <laughs> I just to share with my broke bread best friend. <laughs> True. So, right. speaking of survival, let's get into some of these practical tips. Yes. yes. And, um, you know, I'll be kind of quizzing you because you've taught me so much of what I do know. So, okay. let's deal with topics of financial management, like saving, investing, and so on and so forth. I know. You just mentioned in your story, a lot of this you learned the hard way. What tools have you picked up to help you bounce back? Um, like having a savings, having multiple savings accounts. There is first, the first one you should have is the emergency fund. 
Um, even if you just start with that basic five hundred, a thousand dollars. I mean, because you never know, you know, tires go out, um, hot water heater, you know, air conditioner, anything. And um, so begin to pinch away and and save. And I'll say, you know, a lot of times we'll say, Well, how do I save when I don't have anything? And that's a good, that's a realistic, you know, I don't have extra. But there's this $52 uh, uh, challenge called 52, 52, not $52, 52 week challenge, where you put a dollar a week. If you start at the beginning of the year, if you start January 1, and the first week in January, you put a dollar. The second week in January, you put $2. The third week, you keep doing that until you get to 52 weeks, which is 52 weeks is a year. You will have done that for an entire year. This is just an example. And some people may know about it. It's amazing that at the end of the year, you will have saved $1,378. $1, and you only did $1, $2, $3. Think of it as if you got a soda for the day or you if you're a person that goes get coffee or you bought you know you bought a burger okay that i'm not going to get the dollar burger today that dollar is going to go into that savings so that's one way to do it when you you know you you are really really tight so but anyway get your emergency fund then have another savings for just something you are saving for if that's a vacation or if that's some um, a gift or, you know, something you just, you know, something for yourself or whatever. Have that. And then once you, you know, start with the emergency, then the savings, then the next thing you start investing. And then one tool that I recently started on uh, uh, using is Robinhood, which is an online investment uh, tool. Uh, very user friendly. Uh, you can pretty, it's you know, where you can buy stocks and bonds and mutual funds and different things like that for whatever, you know, if you got a dollar, if you got $5, there's no minimum and there are no fees. So do those in that order. You wouldn't start investing. You wouldn't save for your, your, your vacation unless you got that emergency fund. You wouldn't invest until you got your savings. So kind of get that in order. So that's, and then um begin to tackle some debt mm -hmm. yeah begin to tackle some debt um that may come anywhere in between it wherever you prioritize but um those things is what i'm learning i will say that i'm not the master of it i'm still learning some things i do well some things we i don't but i do know these are some money principles in the finance uh area that do work they're proven to work we just have to have the discipline to do them. Absolutely. And I'll add a couple things on savings. One thing that worked for me is to change in living within my means, change what my means actually look like. Mm. So if I want to get that emergency fund going, if you're working a job and you get a direct deposit, that's true. Set up your direct deposit to automatically send a certain amount to your emergency fund before you ever see it. That helps with the discipline part, what I just said, because, hey, it, it, it's easy not to do it. Uh, uh, so, <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. And you start getting used to living without that. So um, true. Same is true for retirement funds. If you're doing, you know, a 401k, if your company matches, don't sit down on the match. It's free Please money, people. It's free money. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So, you know, get that in there. That's another thing you can send, you know, mm -hmm. away before mm -hmm. you even touch. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. and it helps you, you know, in terms of the whole pre-tax, post-tax deduction. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Something else you had mentioned um, when we were just, you know, pre-talking, mm -hmm. having where you can't easily get to it. That's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so I think that's a good one because otherwise you're kind of dipping. 
Dibby. Dibby. And, and so if it's something somewhere that's fairly difficult, you know, it's like you got to do a little bit. You'll think before you you actually it's like, uh, do I want to go through all of that? Probably not. And it'll give you a little pause. Is this really something I need to be dipping into? Like the savings account I mentioned at the top of the call, it happens mm -hmm. at a bank where the nearest branch is something like 30 miles from See? me. See? So if I, you know, up until recently, if I wanted to draw on that account, I knew I would incur a fee and I had to actually think about, you know, whether or not mm -hmm. I would really need to draw. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. So all of those, you know, anything, you know, and you, you work in your personality, you know, if you know that I'm not disciplined enough to do this, then like Franz, Franz just said, get it automated and get it somewhere that is not easily accessible. So it is, you know, whatever you have to do, you do it, you do it. And I will plug here, if you missed it, we had an excellent sidebar session with Latrice Pugh of yes. Pugh Financial Coaching. Uh, that session is Finding Freedom in Finances, inspired by her book of the yes. same name. So mm -hmm. if you're struggling with financial management, uh, please do go and um, I will put that on the screen right quick. Yes. Yes. Her book is excellent as well. It gives her lots of tools and worksheets and budgeting uh, tools as well. Yes. So if you're um, struggling with uh, finances, do contact Pew Financial Coaching. She is Pew Financial Coaching on Instagram and Facebook. And um, we'll also probably link this in the description bar. But Contact her and catch that sidebar session on our YouTube channel. Excellent. Excellent. Hey. So once you've gotten your actual, you know, your accounts receivables and your accounts payables, yeah. out of the way, your finance, <laughs> personal finance, mm -hmm. life and leisure. So yeah. you get paid and you got to live. One area that I really saw mom work all kinds of magicianship <laughs> was food, grocery shopping, and meal planning. I mean, squeezing $10 out of five. <laughs> what tips do you have, mom? Oh, that's what your dad always says. He says, I would come home and I didn't think anything was in the cupboards. And boy, that was a meal. I don't even know how I did it. God, okay. <laughs> oh my goodness. But when you have to, you find a way. Do you understand what I'm saying, people? Okay. But anyway, <laughs> um, first, I, I use coupons. Um, back in the day, and there are still a few grocery stores that will double and triple coupons. It's not a lot of them, but you, if you have local stores, um, homegrown, I'll say like your Piggly Wigglies, we have your food giants and places like that. Those places will still uh, double or triple your coupons. So that's one way that I, I saved money and still do is clipping coupons and using them at those type stores okay mm -hmm. next thing is i always um plan for the week for the meals and before i go grocery shopping i know exactly what meals i'm fixing so that i'll know the uh the ingredients or or the products that i'm going to buy to go in that list Next thing, keep staples in your home. Staples are your potatoes, your rice, your bread, your onions, your eggs, your flour, your milk. Those are meals, people. All meals don't have to have meat. Yeah. yeah. You know. And then if you do want meat, you get things that you can, like ground beef, you know, goes a long way. Um, if you're using chicken breasts or whatever, you're going to cut that chicken up in several different, you know, that's another tip. Get when you break, when you buy your, um, uh, your meats, 
divide them up when you come home into Ziploc bags, you know, into um, servings. That way you can, you know, you can kind of, um, I say ration or portion them out and you'll know what meals can go with what. Um, but again, you are dicing and slicing. Okay. When you are serious, when you are really tight on money, there is not, you're not going to get these whole pieces of meat. You so got unless you shredding them up to go in some soup or something. Unless you putting them in soup, unless you doing tacos or casseroles, because you are stretching. You you cannot you see a leg and a thigh. That's a meal for four. If you are putting it in soup, <laughs> if you are putting it in a casserole, uh-huh. a pound of ground beef. Yeah, you thinking? Oh no, you cut that pound in half. And that is spaghetti. That is uh, tacos for the other one. You know, you will be amazed at how filling you can make a meal, especially, like I said, I can't stress enough, beans, uh, you know, they have fiber and they are nutritious and they fill you up. So, you know, whether that's chili or, you know, uh, red beans and rice, Sausage is a good stretcher. So these are some of my tips, you know, just looking at food that is filling and and still nutritious that can go a long ways. And then dividing your meats up and, you know, using vegetables, you know, more of your plate with vegetables than it is with meat. Every meal does not have to have meat Um, and using coupons. And so, you know, yes, I can I can create a five dollar meal. If you want to know, you know, just come it down there and I give you some of my five minute meals. Five, five not five minutes now, five dollars. <laughs> Definitely, bro. We need to hear some of those and we need to hear from you. If you've got some tips about managing money, practical tips that help you stretch your, your coins. Be sure to put them down in the comments. Yes, yes. We want to hear them and we're sure they will help somebody else. Yes. Yep. And so as far as like grocery shopping and meal planning, I learned all of those things from you. And um, you taking it to another level. So let's talk about you know, what you Yes. Do. Yes. So I have a video that I will put somewhere in a card. Uh, where I deal with meal planning as a process. Some people go as far out as a month. I don't. Um, But at least over the course of the week, I'll take my calendar and lay out whatever meals I'm going to plan. My breakfast, my lunch, my dinner, whatever I want to cook, and then build my grocery list from there. Mm -hmm. And I will go in and I'll audit my grocery list and see what I have because buying duplicates is also a problem. If you don't inventory your kitchen often enough or before you shop, you know, you've wasted money because you bought too much. Yeah. And I've done that. Mm -hmm. Or -hmm. you've gone in the store without a list and you (laughs) bought too much or too much of things that really don't make a lot of sense. Yes. Bill planning definitely saves you the budget. Um, it helps you make the arrangements as in I'm buying, you know, two pounds of chicken. How, what all can I do? do. With this? Mm-hmm. That's, exact, that's it. That's it. So laying that out and having a plan will help you shop. It'll give you an opportunity to look at your circulars and mm-hmm. your coupons mm-hmm. and see what you can do. And see, when mom, when you were doing it, Pinterest wasn't a thing. No, no, Pinterest no. was not a thing. Mm-hmm. Google wasn't a thing. So mm-hmm. now <laughs> you got the options to look at what you have in your cupboards mm-hmm. and just say, uh, I don't know, broccoli, chicken, cheese, <laughs> rice, and yes. with recipes exactly. that you have. Exactly. If you got broccoli, cheese, and rice, you have a casserole, people. Okay. You absolutely have a casserole. <laughs> yes, yes. That leftover cornbread uh, is what dressing. 
Okay. It sure is. It's some good dressing. Too. And it's good too. Yes. Oh, one other practical tip in grocery shopping. Do not go to the grocery store hungry. You oh. will buy everything. <laughs> everything looks good because you are hungry. No, I've done it. Don't do that. Don't You're going to overspend every time. <laughs> Every time. Every, every time. Every time. Every time. Because I was like, oh, that looks good. Oh, oh, oh. Stuff that even and you got a list. And it's it's not even on that list. Because you're hungry. One thing to that degree, too, having a bank of recipes that you like. Yeah. So let's say you're meal planning. If you have a sheet or something with the recipes that you know your family will eat and that you don't have waste if your money you know gets a little thin you can draw from that that's true um that's true. you can definitely draw from that but furthermore having a command of the number of servings certain recipes made Mm -hmm. uh, the number of servings your family will eat mm -hmm. of those recipes true. True. is helpful because that'll keep you from over or under buying too. Another true. thing, you know, from childhood, seeing mom put these things together, food in my relationship with it. You guys catch the Ten Commandments of food. That's another side of our session we did. Mm -hmm. But I'm always afraid of not having enough or, you know, somebody wanting more of something and it not being there. So sometimes I will overcook. I never really learned to cook small portions of stuff. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. But the more, you know, the more I go along and can kind of mm -hmm. see how mm -hmm. things go, knowing how many servings to to cook helps influence my buying and it also influences what you were saying about you know splitting the meals up and ziplocs and all that kind of stuff because mm -hmm. waste is also something to factor it's that's true to like buy what you need but if it has gone in the garbage you it's still like it that is so true. And I experienced that more now because it's just me and your dad. Mm -hmm. And I, so I definitely had to adjust, you know, how much I cook and we don't eat all the leftovers, you know, if, you know maybe after a day or so it's, it's, you know, so, you know, you have to adjust according to your lifestyle and the changes that are going on in your life because waste is a factor. This is very true. Like you said, I can cook a whole big pot of red beans and rice. Yes, I might have only spent five dollars, but if only uh, a fourth of it was eaten, I still wasted. That was five dollars. I probably could have put somewhere else, and um, and then build in a, a day uh, uh, of where you eat out. You know, mm -hmm. I'm not saying you know you be a miser and and buy and fix food and cook food that your family enjoys, but. Um, you know, when you're trying to save, sometimes I know that can be one of your biggest money holes is food. Absolutely. The biggest budget buster. And you hit up on that. Eating out, schedule that into your meal plan. Yes. Yeah, because if you do it haphazardly, you, you look at that, that month and want to see where your money went. Yeah. <laughs> Tell, tell Brian, you'd be real sadly, not sad, sadly. Sad me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so another area, clothing and household and other goods. How do you save on those? Now, I love thrift shopping. I love it. I love it. I love it. And, you know, you can find, especially for your household goods, uh, certain furniture, lamps, uh, pictures, picture frames, if you like whatnot, all of that. 
and even certain uh, thrift stores are more, um, they're more organized and the clothing is a little more higher end. Um, I didn't do a lot of that during the pandemic, you know, just, just my little personal fear, but um, there, you know, if you take, bring, you know, see something you really do like and you bring it home and wash it, it's, it's fine. And, and the types of clothes you buy, that's up to you. But strict, definitely your household goods and things like that save money there tremendously. I love, uh, for clothing, I love stores like TJ Maxx and Ross and Burks and those count stores. I am a discount shopper. You know, I am going to first when I go into any store, whether that's a Dillard's or Macy's or wherever you're going, I'm going to that clearance section. I'm going to that off rack or what what do they call it in Macy? It's, it's a it's a it's a it's, it's a big red sign and it's in the back and they backstage. have all backstage. It's backstage. That's it. There is always a department or a section in any store that things are on sale. Start there first and then work your way because nine times out of 10, you're going to find something you know, at, on sale. And I always say, if you're patient in shopping, this is one tip. If you're a patient in shopping, there is pretty much nothing you can't get that's not on sale. You don't have to pay retail if you are patient. And, um, you know, certain things, you know, your big ticket items, you still can get at a good deal. You know, you just want to be um, wise when you're shopping for those and you buy the best you can afford of the big ticket items because those things you want to last. That's it. Clothes, yeah. Clothes, shoes, all this kind of stuff. I mean, you still want to get good stuff, you know, depending on what you're getting. Now, if I'm buying flip flops and sandals, I'm buying a hundred of them. I'm just, you know, <laughs> giving a number. They can range from a dollar flip flop to a twenty dollar flip flop. It, it is what it is. So, you know, you determine what that value is, that item, how valuable it is to you. It's going to depend on how much you are willing to spend. Mm hmm. And how long you're keeping that item depends on how much you're willing to spend. And again, have a budget for that. It's every time you shop, have a budget. I have gone and said, I'm only going to spend $20 today on me. This is just being pr very practical. And I might find a, a beauty product I like. I might have found a scarf. I might have found a cute little shirt, you know, T-shirt. You can do it. If you just set the budget that works for you, you can you can do it. And it's kind of gratifying. It's uh, For me, it's almost like, oh, wow, I worked that $20. Do you see what I got? You know, I'll call from my mom. Look, I let me tell you about the deal I, I found today. Yeah. You know? So it can be, you know, a little gratifying and satisfying to be able to save money. Definitely. Um, we are our bargain hunters to the heart. Yes. It's a hobby. For real, yeah. for real. For real, for real. We have gone everywhere. There are stores called Dirt Cheap. We have gone all across the Americas looking for the <laughs> Dirt Cheap. Since she was like, what? How old, Fran? Little, little. Because I mean, Hudson's. Hudson's. It was called Hudson's at first. And uh, uh, and then it turned to treasure hunt. And yeah. now, now it's dirt cheap. <laughs> and and you know, it's not good now. And you got to be a true bargain hunter. Some people don't like it because you got to dig through. <laughs> you literally dig through. But if you, you know, like that, like I know, find yourself. Was where that patience comes in and kind of on that tip. I don't really buy much of anything full price. I just don't, you know. Mm -hmm. Um, I think everyone would do well to set a ceiling for themselves. Yes. Like, I'm mm -hmm. only willing to pay mm -hmm. this much for this. Mm -hmm. I'm only willing to pay this much for that. Mm -hmm. And let that kind of be your budget 
Yes. That's going to be different for everybody because yes. you have to decide, yes. like you said, what things are worth to you, but invest in the things that make sense for your lifestyle. Mm -hmm. If you're a runner, then you're going to invest in some good shoes. That's right. Oh. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. That's right. If you work in an office, then you might invest in a few of your work pieces that mm -hmm. you know you're going to wear mm -hmm. all the time. Mm -hmm. But in that same token, I would say start off with a capsule wardrobe of the things that are staples. Like, you know, mm -hmm. you got to have a mm -hmm. black blazer. I know I got to have a black pair of pumps mm -hmm. and build everything else around that. Mm -hmm. Once mm -hmm. you have that, then you can kind of start waiting on the other stuff, like buying mm -hmm. winter clothes mm -hmm. during the winter clearance. Mm -hmm. That's season. right. Buy your stuff off season. Exactly. Summertime, buy winter things. Wintertime, buy some, you know, or when it's going out, you know, back and forth. But yeah, buy your clothes off season. You get the biggest so thing for your clothes. Yes. And understand your favorite store sales cycles like TJ Maxx. They're going to mark stuff down and put a red tag on it, but then they're going to mark stuff down again and put a yellow tag on it. Mm -hmm. and if mm -hmm. it's something mm -hmm. you don't absolutely have that moment, you Wait. have to have that moment. Wait and see if they mark it down again. Exactly. Exactly. Yes, that's a great one. Know your favorite store sales cycle. And um, stores like that, too, like for me, I'm considered now this a senior. Um, they have days that you're going to get a senior discount. So, again, if it's something you saw and you can wait on it and you know you can get 10, 50 10 to 15 percent off. Wait on it. Patience is the key. Patience is the key. Like and, Miller's is my favorite department store, but I generally wait and buy a lot of things during the New Year sale. Yeah. And, <laughs> yes, yes. And I'm thinking mm -hmm. about something. You said patience is the key. Impulse shopping sometimes. If you go and you're looking for something and maybe just take 24 hours to think about it, you know, especially if mm -hmm. it's not, if it's something that you just you don't really have to have, but it's just this one. Then think about it overnight. And if it's still on your mind, that is, I've done that many times. And I wake up, I, that was a good deal. I like that. This is something I really want. I go back and if it's there, I'm going to get it. If it's not, I'm okay. Yeah. And, you know, or if I wake up, I don't really need that. You know, so some, sometimes you have to, you know, brace yourself or, or, or for that impulse shopping. Um, because that can kind of throw you and derail you a little bit sometimes. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, you know, dealing with things you need, dealing with things that are fun, like travel is another good area in terms of saving money. We yes, had to do it. But, you know, people are starting to get back out there as mm -hmm. safely mm -hmm. as possible. Mm -hmm know that yeah. you have options like for us we've been using airbnb mm -hmm. success mm -hmm. you know as opposed to putting our entire family in hotel rooms for exactly time. exactly exactly that's a great way when you have a, a group um and if you are doing hotels using reward points um first of all signing up for then you know, all free sign up at different different hotel brands sign up for their loyalty cards or what I mean they're yeah and um that way you're earning points we've gotten a lot of free nights based mm -hmm. on you know me signing up for those points I mean those uh those programs like I said completely free um something else I was gonna say about travel um go ahead I was just going to add to that, too. If you work for a larger company, mm -hmm. your your companies, a lot of times they will have programs, discount programs for various things. But travel, 
tends to be one of them and check with your company's purchasing department because mm -hmm. you again work for a larger company that does a lot mm -hmm. of travel mm -hmm. they will negotiate rates mm -hmm. with hotels for the company right mm -hmm. sometimes those hotels will extend those discounts That's, that is so true that same is so thing true. cars same thing that's true and saying that about the discount um aarp if you are 50 or older they are going to always have at least 10 percent on hotels rental cars you know you, you're going to be able to get discounts um and that's a way to save all the way around they have many many benefits i'm a big aarp fan um so yes with travel definitely check your you know like you said your company discounts um your um your rewards and um there's a site that i use for pretty much everything we might get into this retail me not yes yeah. and they are all you know that's where i usually check first because they're gonna you know they're a coupon aggregate and so you just type in whatever you know you're looking for you know where you're shopping or or whatever in a hotel and it will list any coupons i mean any discounts codes that are related to that particular hotel and i'm saved anywhere from 10 to 25 percent so check retail me not pretty much on a regular basis when you when you're shopping Mm -hmm. and planning helps with that too mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that's true with, know what you want to do kind of have an idea of what you want to eat because then you can go to your retail me not your groupons all of those mm -hmm. yeah groupons. That's exactly. discounts before you go it's true you're going to be gone for an extended period of time or if it's a road trip mm -hmm. little things like Packing your own snacks. Mm -hmm. It's cheaper mm -hmm. to buy, you know, a sleeve of Cokes than it is to buy one in a hotel. That's or two at the gas station. Gas station. That is so true. Good tip. Yeah, definitely so. So, so yeah. Save where you can. Think about where you can. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So free stuff <laughs> free is always good okay well there's this site called free cycle and free cycle um uh, is just that it is you uh um a site where people are giving away free stuff and you basically go on there and you can filter down by um city and state and you know, type in your particular town or whatever, and it'll list people that are giving away anything from boxes to furniture. Mm -hmm. You know, some people can give away cars. They may not work, you know, but you know, if you have a person like my husband that can fix cars, you know, they are giving away any and everything. Um, and believe it or not, Craigslist is still around and it's still a viable option, and they have, you know, a link for free stuff um so you know that's that's one way to get um free stuff and another is kind of linked to what we were just talking about there are a lot of re rebate sites mm -hmm. like Edgerton, and then there's honey that um you while you're shopping especially online if you're shopping in amazon which we have done tons of this this year and every you know particular um then there is a um they give you a rebate in it you know it could be percent one percent two percent three percent or whatever of whatever you have purchased and it accumulates over time so in a sense you know that is free money so to speak is and um so that's a good site to um always have once it's you can once you join it is completely free you can link um your you link up to the sites that you're shopping with and so it becomes automatic and so every time that you shop then it is just depositing um what you purchased you know the percentage into that particular uh, account 
and then they can pay you by PayPal or they can send you a check. So easy way to uh, earn a little extra cash. It's really a good little extra money hustle. Hmm. Hmm. What I can think of too, if you're a Target shopper, make sure you're enrolled in a Target Circle program. Um, Tell us about Target Circle. It's an app on your phone that, of course, you can shop through it if you want to. Mm -hmm. But the best feature is that they have all sorts of coupons. They store manufacturers' coupons in there and the store discounts that you don't see in the store. Mm -hmm. You can go through the app and look at the Target Circle deals and the coupons and add them to your wallet so okay. and it'll be deals exclusive to the circle and when okay. you check out you type in your phone number and those coupons and discounts automatically pop up mm -hmm. and you also get a percentage for every dollar you spend so you might end up you know with a several dollar credit over time on top of what you saved from the actual circle discounts that's good. I thought of something else for free. Uh, it was just ring. Um, there's another site that I use called slickdeals.net. Yes. And it has a range of everything. Uh, you can find things that are on sale, and um, but you can also find free stuff as well. So they have another little section on their site free. Another way to get free is free samples. There are sites that will send you samples of their products. And a lot of times the samples, they're, they're nice little sizes. Um, join panels. I'm a member of what you call pink panel. It's a, a beauty panel for women. Mm -hmm. And they need to test out new products. I have gotten mascara, lipstick, foundation, blush. I've gotten some of everything. Um, then there's a home tester club. Uh, all of these you join for free. And they want you to test certain things from vacuum cleaners. And you get to keep all of this from tooth, electric toothbrushes, uh, batteries. I've gotten some of every, again, everything. So all of these ways you can actually get free products for just voicing your opinion. Um, so another way to earn money. I'm just, it's all coming to focus mm -hmm. groups. These are groups online that want your opinion that is all they want they want your opinion on a product or a service or even just situations that are going on and <clears throat> excuse me and if you join and you generally take a survey and if that you fit the criteria that, that they are looking for then they will call you to participate on the panel and hundreds of dollars. I've made as much as $500 in an hour on a panel. And so not guaranteed that you're going to always get called now. So don't think this is where you can make boo coups, but you join enough of them. And we'll, I probably will link some of those places in the description as well. Your chances of getting called to participate are greater. So all of these ways are like it, free money, ways to earn money, and so. Awesome. 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 I can't stop thinking about that commercial. Which one? And free. And free. And free. And free. And free. And free. <laughs> That's a total tax. I think it is, isn't it? Uh -huh. <laughs> Style for free. Every, 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 yes. <laughs> you can't be free. You, you can't. can't be free anytime, no time. So one other area that we would be remiss if we didn't talk about is one of the most expensive investments you'll ever make, education. Yes, it is. That's mm -hmm. another area where I, I went to school for free. <laughs> A, a to the men. <laughs> so we want you to know absolutely that it is possible. It is possible um, to go to school either for free 
or at low cost with planning and education. Uh, Mom has her service scholarship mama that deals with a lot of this. Talk about that, Mom. Well, you know, learning, learning and helping you and uh, your brother through the uh, the college process. And hey, you know, we wish us uh, what to say cash poor, Mm -hmm. (laughs) so to speak. And so, you know, just knowing that there was no set aside here for this college fund, then we're going to have to get very resourceful. But far as scholarships and everything and education that starts early that starts you know uh prepping your 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 children in the ninth grade or what have you to begin to take courses that are geared to um college prep um stressing the importance of doing the best that you can you know so that your grades will be reflected in that taking those ACTs early and practicing because it's not a matter of practice. I don't care what anybody tells you. You can get a good score, you know, if you practice and take workshops or what have you. Um, Putting your children in various activities um, that are geared to their interest because they're basically building a resume which will help them in looking and obtaining different scholarships. Um, This will kind of lead into the next topic is summer programs, free and low cost summer programs. I'm going to tie it all in together. Mm -hmm. Um, Every, generally every local college has some type of program geared to a varied amount of interest from, you know, sports to science to the creative arts or what have you. And I know now, you know, a lot of those are virtual, but that's still okay as long as they're getting the experience. And some of these programs, Shafran and and Cameron, they got paid. There there are programs that will give stipends to your young people. And so not only are they learning something, they're they're earning money, but at the same time, you know, they are building that resume. And if you see your child is interested in a particular area, you know, if they're great at science or, you know, they're great at the arts or whatever, then, you know, craft their summers, some part of it around that. You know, don't just have them sit at home all summer and do nothing, you know. Um, so craft some of their activities around their interests and their strengths, because this will help when you're talking about colleges and scholarships because scholarships they're so varied and they're not all looking for the the a student they're looking for the real rounded student the student that has experiences the students that have a story even those painful stories sometimes are the ones you know how did you persevere how did you get through even the colleges the special colleges it would have these uh admission rates that are pretty you know low or tight they are looking for that unique student not necessarily the, the like i said the a plus student so these are all ways for your young person your your uh student to obtain uh scholarships and then there's grants there's this there's free money of course if you uh within a certain income level there's still the the pale grant that will you know pay a, a good little portion and then there are grants there are companies lots of companies um will have money set aside for uh, education and then I would be remiss to not talk about community colleges. That is your least expensive route to go. And those two years are a great foundation. The same uh, courses that you will take at that two year college is the same one you're gonna take at the first two years of the four year college. So if you really need to save money and you know, it's, and even if your young person is just not ready to go to a four-year college, community colleges are great. They're affordable. You're going to get that foundation. You're going to get those same courses and then you can transfer. And then there are scholarships for transfer students. 
are students that have gone into a two-year college. So if they did really well, and a lot of times it gives them an opportunity to do excellent, they can get a scholarship to go to, to the four-year college. So it's many ways. Absolutely. Absolutely. So our prayer for all of you and your young people is that cost is not a barrier. It's not a barrier. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Where well, there's so, a wheel, by the way. <laughs> there is. There is. And I'll mention too, you know, a lot of community colleges have trade options. So if the academia sure. side isn't appealing, um, look That's into right. those options at That's those seeds right. to get a skilled trade. That That's, you right. That's right. That's right. There's many routes after high school, and they all they are not all leading to a four year degree. So, yeah. you know, everybody is different, and you steer your young person in the direction that they have the strengths and the passion to go. Don't hold them back, no matter what, because they're gonna do great. If, if they are uh, passionate about what they do. Absolutely. So we've talked a lot about practical tips and as we wind down, we wanna talk strategically. None of what we have discussed so far <laughs> matters if you don't have general principles of managing money. And mm -hmm. so, um, I'm going to ask you, what are your top, what are your top three general life lessons and advice about money? Um, three areas to put your money. Pay God first. I'm a, I'm a believer, so I say tie, mm -hmm. save, and spend. You know, you need all three of those. You don't need to be a miser where you save, save, save. And you never spend any money. That's not fun. But on the other hand, you don't need to spend, 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 and you never save. But you pay God first, pay yourself, and then spend it on others, you know, and spend it, you know, on yourself. And others. So that's that's one tip. Live within your means. Don't try to, try to keep up with the Joneses because you don't know what the Joneses are doing to maintain their lifestyle. Um, your, your life is your life. And if you are happy with it on a dollar and you are fine, then great. Be, be happy with that. And don't, you know, try to, um, um, yeah, don't try to live outside of what you can afford. And like I said, looking and comparing yourself to others. Because um, you you just don't know, you just don't know. Uh, and the third one is let's see, I'm ready. To oh, okay. Um, I kind of said that at the top. Don't try to compensate for what you didn't have by throwing it, you know, all on your children, it, because. It, some things they got to experience some stuff they have to um be able to to go through and so shielding them and protecting them from because you did not have is is not going to benefit them in the long run teaching them will but overcompensating will not and and it'll may create an entitle entitlement um, mentality. So those are my three, my top three, you know, pay God, pay yourself, be, uh, pay others or, or spend on others. Um, live within your means and don't try to over, overcompensate for what you didn't have. You actually, make, oh, go ahead. I was just going to say you took quite a few of the ones that I would have thought of. Oh, okay. Okay. But I would add to that Never loan money you actually need back. Um, if you choose to loan somebody money, treat it as a gift. Uh, a lot of relationships have been ruined because Ooh, what you talking about? <laughs> uh, somebody let somebody else hold 
a little something. Mm -hmm. <laughs> them, take that money that they held and go buy some new shoes. Like, uh -huh. you know, well, in the, yes, that say that. <laughs> yes. So, so that's a good one. Treat it as a gift, and when it comes back to you, it becomes woo, an unexpected yeah. blessing. Exactly, an unexpected blessing. That is so true. So true. Oh, that's a good one. And I'll reiterate um, learn the difference between a need and a want. Um, and I would reiterate to pass this on to the next generation yes we um yes. approach life with an attitude of gratitude, gratitude. Yes. and it'll keep you from a lot of the overspending because you'll realize i don't have to have this my life right. money does not run me that's a good one Money is a tool. Money does not run you. And you tell your money where to go. Absolutely. Absolutely. You have the power. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, that's so true. Your money, what to do. And when it doesn't run you, you understand very clearly what you need, what you want. And when you buy what you want, it's not because you were strapped down and you had to have mm -hmm. it. It's truly a treat. It's truly a treat. So true. And yeah. I would also piggyback on your statement about tithing. Learn to give. Because mm -hmm. I promise you, I, God does love a cheerful giver. Um, and when you become generous with what he has been generous in giving to you, You'll never, you'll never really be broke. You'll never really be broke. It's so true. Because he will provide. He will provide. Yeah, yeah. So definitely. And like I said, there is a scripture. Um, I can't really quote it, but um, we'll find it and put it in the description as well. He says, that's the one time he says, try me. Yeah. Try me and see. That I won't open up the windows and pour a blessing out for you. So he's basically saying, just just try time. Just try it. And you know, so. And it goes back to that whole attitude of gratitude. And if you are grateful for what you have, what you have will be enough. It know? will be enough. That's and right. Giving in terms of tithing, giving to other people. Yes, just giving. It's an attitude and an action and expression of gratitude for what you do have. So, so true. Yes, definitely don't want to be remiss without ending with the giving, 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 giving. Because yes. it's just money is just a tool. It's not something to hoard. It's something to to use. So. It yes, mm -hmm. it's a mindset, y'all. It's a mindset. It, it's, it, it really is. It really is. It's a, it's a mindset. It's a training. You have to. It's a work in progress. Like I say, not all there, but hey, working on it. Better than it was. <laughs> so with that said, we all have you know opportunities to grow and things we've learned. We want you to share what opportunities you think you have to grow in concerning money and areas you have grown in. Any yes. tips? have let us know we want to hear your thoughts yes yes please so speaking of of god the anchor verse what let's talk about one of the many 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 things the bible says about money so um matthew 6 chapter 30 really we recommend in your own time to go back and read 24 through 34 I believe. yes yes mm -hmm. but matthew 6 and 30 wherefore if god so clothed the grass of the field which today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven shall he not much more clothe you O ye of little faith mm -hmm. and then verse 33 
Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. So as we've just discussed, money is uh, managing money starts in the mind, but it's also a heart issue as well. Yes. It's a matter of faith. It's a matter of trusting God to provide all that you need. So yes. Yes. God first understanding that you are so important to him and that he will provide. Yes. Yes. And and um, understanding that all we have comes from him. So, you know, uh, I like what you said, an attitude of gratitude, just thankful for what he is doing in your life. And it'll translate into your giving, you know. Um, so. Yeah. All right, then. Well, any more thoughts about finances? Oh, no. Well, you, you could go on and on and <laughs> we could go, but we, you know, but it, this has been a robust discussion. And, um, you know, like I said, I would definitely like you all to uh, comment and share and um, let's all help each other. So because it's it's uh, it's a challenging topic, but and money will be here forever. So hopefully we'll be able to learn together. Absolutely. Well, let's talk about our next sidebar session, y'all. We are in for a real, real treat. April is Autism Awareness Month, and on the 15th of April, our next show will be Uniquely Perfect, a conversation on a conversation on autism. And we'll have our special guests, Kristen Bennett and Christina Fletcher on uh, to share with us. They are, are gems of resources in terms of this topic from personal experience as well as their experience as educators. Yes. So what we want you to do is begin to ask questions. Yes. Yes. Please, 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 we'll please. pop the fire up please. on IG as well as Facebook. And we want you to have a dialogue with us. Ask your questions. Give us your thoughts so that our panelists can come prepared to, to really, really talk about this topic and bring you guys into the conversation. It's yes. an important matter. It's, it's gained traction in terms of awareness over the last couple of years. And we know that a lot of people are dealing with it and yes. in the support. So we're excited to have these guests on to really help some folks. Yes, yes. Very excited. Yes, please drop your questions. Uh, begin to send them and, and um, so that we can have a robust discussion and really, you know, like she said, bring you in and help. Uh, anyone that's dealing with this uh, this topic. Absolutely. And so in order to keep up with us and all our goings on, again, all of our flyers and whatnot go up on Facebook and uh, Instagram. We post all of our videos to YouTube and you can find us at Sweet Tea Gems on all three of those meetings. So just yes. type it to your bar and be sure to like, comment, and subscribe to what you see on those channels. Also, if you have a question or a comment or a topic that you would like us to cover um, on Sweet Tea Gems, email us. You can either DM us on those mediums, but you can also email us at let's talk at sweettgems.com. We want to hear from you. We love to hear from you and engage and hear your thoughts. You guys make the tea so much sweeter. <laughs> yes, you do. You do. And I want to say before it's over, a shout out and a happy uh, anniversary to MacTheMaverick.com. Yay! It was started 
four, is it four years? Four, four years, years ago today. So that's another, I mean, rich, rich resource. Um, she talks about lifestyle, beauty, uh, planning. So MacTheMaverick.com, MacTheMaverick.com, and also on YouTube and Instagram and Facebook. So happy anniversary, MacTheMaverick.com. Thanks. Thanks. <laughs> All right, then. Well, this has been Sidebar Sessions, Ball Down a Budget, and we will catch you guys on the next one. Bye-bye.